What is going on everyone? So probably the main reason I bought the Mavic Air was to use it for active track while mountain biking. But if you're riding by yourself, the options for dealing with a controller aren't exactly ideal. So there's one option that DC Rainmaker used in one of his active track videos where I think he used some cardboard and then some rubber bands to cover up the joystick so they wouldn't get bumped in his backpack. That was I think with the Mavic Pro where it didn't have the removable joysticks. The fact that the Mavic Air does have the removable joysticks, I think it would be a lot better solution just to toss in the backpack. But still, it's not like you have direct access to your controller if something were to go wrong, and I think something did go wrong in that video. And then I've heard the option of just placing your controller on the ground, which just seems super sketchy to me. And then you could just use your smartphone and then mount it on your handlebars, but at that point, you won't have as much range. So I couldn't necessarily find an elegant way to deal with a controller in a safe and secure manner. So funny enough, I was already looking for an iPad mounting solution because I wanted a bigger screen. So I went to the Amazons, looked at all the different options, and then I started to think I could probably mount one of these. So if you're a cyclist, you may already ride with a head unit, which is gonna be much more convenient than a watch. But if you do, you may already use a Garmin Edge computer, which all mount using what they call a quarter turn 20 mount. And then if you're like DC Rainmaker or myself, you'll probably have numerous of these mounts all over your bikes. So I guess first of all, you could very well buy a cheap case and then use this thing called a KOM edge mount and just mount it on the back of the case if you just want to use your smartphone. And that will definitely work, but if you still want the full control as well as the range of the controller, I think I may have come up with a little solution here. So there's going to be a couple caveats with this. First of all, I think it's probably only going to work with the out front edge mounts that mount your computer in front of your handlebar since you have a gigantic controller. So you could very well glue the KOM mount directly to the back of the controller, but I don't really want to mess it up. So I think this could be a little bit better. But what we're going to do instead is actually glue the KOM mount to the back of one of these iPad and iPhone holders. So this went through a couple different iterations before I finally landed on this exact solution. So the first solution was pretty basic. What I did was I just glued the KOM mount directly to the back of the mount and then just used the existing clamp and arms to mount my smartphone. So since you are gonna be gluing the KOM mount to the bottom of the mount, what it's gonna do is unfortunately interfere with the USB on the bottom of the controller. So the one thing you will need for this particular mounting solution is going to be a micro USB to USB type A female adapter so you can plug in whatever adapter directly to your phone. I've got a fairly long lightning cable, but just try to find the shortest lightning cable that you can. And then this will make it so you don't have to plug your smartphone directly into the bottom of the controller. So version one surprisingly worked out pretty darn good. It definitely was a little bit awkward with my smartphone being mounted so high up above the controller, but it seemed to work fine even on some rougher terrain. But as soon as I got home, I discovered that those little screws definitely are not gonna be meant for more rugged use. And this is not to say anything about the quality of the product. This was definitely not the intended use. So even though that definitely worked, uh, we need something a little bit more rugged. So for version two, I wanted to make a few little changes. So first of all, I wanted to get the KOM mount a little bit more off of the bottom of the mount, just so you could get it onto some edge mounts that are a little bit more recessed. And then second of all, I wanted a mounting solution that wasn't gonna utilize these small little screws as well as the kind of longer arm. So I dug through quite a bit of my miscellaneous camera equipment and I think I found a solution. So if you are already a YouTube creator, you may already have most of these parts laying around, but if you don't, I'll have links to these exact products in the description below. So the first thing that you're gonna need is just at least the plate portion of a particular iPad or iPhone mount. And then the second thing you're gonna need is that KOM mount. So I did wanna utilize this existing clamp, but unfortunately I couldn't really find a way to mount this clamp to the original plate. So I dug through some of my gear and I found this smartphone mount that actually has a quarter 20 hole in the back. And then I found a tripod base plate mounting screw and a little nut to keep it in place. And then the last thing you're gonna need is some really strong double-sided Gorilla Tape. I found this one that holds up to 30 pounds. Oh yeah, and if you do wanna have a little bit of space in between your KOM mount and your base plate, you're gonna to have to find something to space that out. So what I did was I just cut out a little piece of wood. And then what I also did was make a little hole or countersink for the actual head of the tripod bolt. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is actually mount the smartphone holder to the tripod bolt as well as the nut. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's tight and very secure as well as centered, so take your time with this step. So since I already glued the KOM mount to the base plate on version one, I had to cut a new piece of the Gorilla Tape to mount on the back of the mount. But you're also gonna need another piece for the other side of the spacer. And then depending on your configuration of whatever type of your bolt you're using, you may have to cut out a little hole for that. So I'm not necessarily sure if that little countersink was necessary. 
But before you take the tape off and start to glue it, make sure all those surfaces are really clean of any dust or debris. And then once you line everything up and put everything into place, just really smash those things together and make sure that they're extremely secure. And here's what it looks like when it's complete. I like the fact that it's just one piece and it's gonna be easily portable where you can just toss it inside a backpack. One of the things that I did do is I used some black paint just to touch up the wood just to make the whole thing match. Now with the configuration of most edge mounts, you will have to mount the base plate to your edge mount before putting your controller on the base plate. But once you put it on, you can just slide your controller right on and it's gonna be very, very secure. And then all you do from there is just mount your smartphone and then plug it into the USB port on the side of the controller. And then there you go, you have a nice, very sleek and very secure controller that doesn't have any moving parts that could possibly break off. So the one thing I will say about this configuration is that it's not exactly the most user friendly for just handheld use. Because your thumb kind of has to go in between the cable and the left joystick, but still this is going to be more intended for cycling use. But I will have to say that this does solve one of my very, very few gripes I have about using the Mavic Air, and that's having to slide your smartphone into the controller and then plug in the lightning cable, and then you know how you can't really access the home button? Well, this is a lot more convenient and actually gives you access to everything here. So I had zero issues with version 2, even while mountain biking. It was ridiculously stable, my phone didn't shake around like version 1, and then surprisingly, the rubber clamps on the Mavic Air controller really did a good job at holding the base plate in place. But if you are concerned about that, you can use some sort of solution like a Velcro strap around the entire thing, or you could use zip ties. So now that I actually have a decent solution for testing the active track for cycling, I can actually get to that as well as the weather's gonna be a lot nicer. So anyways, this was just my own little solution for this, but if you have any suggestions, definitely leave those in the comment section below. I may come up with some other ideas and upgrades for this, but at this point, I think this is working out pretty well. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and if this video helped you out at all, please hit that like button, and also subscribe to the channel because I'll be reviewing a lot more drone accessories coming soon.